Residents here in the Eglinton and Mount Pleasant area have been on edge ever since these two homeless shelters on Broadway opened in the spring and a third on Mount Pleasant opened last month. They say they have brought increased crime to their formerly peaceful neighborhood. Then when an employee of one of these shelters got stabbed and seriously injured last week and as kids get set to return to school, their fear and anxiety is at an all time high and they say it's now time to fight back. We cannot wait until somebody loses their life. Not a child, not an elderly person, nobody. Uh, and we feel that that's going to happen. We feel tensions are really escalating. Yes. We do not want to see anybody on any side hurt or assaulted or killed. Yeah. The incident happened last Tuesday evening. A client of the shelter has been charged. Residents say there's widespread drug use, discarded needles and feces in people's yards. That is a body. And there have been three fatal overdoses. Tammy McLean says her skincare business, along with the retail store below her, have had three break ins or attempted break ins in a two week period last month. When people are uh, dealing drugs, committing prostitution, leaving needles where little children can step on them, uh, and our animals, um, threatening people with dirty syringes, breaking into our businesses, which are barely surviving due to COVID, yeah. we're not taking it anymore. Right. Tammy has organized a rally to restore safety to the area. Lucy Brown is planning to attend. We want the safety of the community restored. We want our children to be safe going to school. And, you know, right now with, with COVID and now this, especially for the teachers, the teachers in the area are also have expressed their concerns. The city has not addressed the issue and this, the issue needs to be addressed. The counselor for the area spoke to City News today. He tells us the two shelters on Broadway will be closed at the end of this month, but it's still not clear what will happen to the Roehampton Hotel shelter because it turns out the city has signed a two-year lease for it, which came as a surprise to Matlow. When I was told about the lease in early July, the first question I asked the city staff was, what is your community engagement plan? And I was told that there wasn't going to be one. Not only is there a city policy that they don't have to consult, but they also said that because of the COVID emergency, they just weren't able to. Advocates for the homeless say they understand some of the community concerns, but say these have been difficult times for shelter residents as well, and they too have a right to a safe home, especially in these COVID times. It was actually um, really helpful for some people because it provided a stable place for people to live and to at least have some temporary respite. So it was positive for some people, but for a lot of people, it was not actually in a neighborhood that they were comfortable in. So being in a, being at Young and Anglican has actually been really difficult for a number of the residents in the buildings. If the city is able to demonstrate that they can um, run this shelter in a way that is caring and supportive for their clients, um, but doesn't have a genuinely unsafe impact on the community, then I don't think most people will care what happens in the building for you know a couple of years, but it can't be done in a way that uh, allows for the status quo to continue. The city is planning to hold a meeting with the community on August 19th to talk next steps. Pam Seidel, City News.